Okay, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, this special event, uh, Carpentry 101 uh, in the Master's Footsteps. So um, we're welcoming Ruben uh, Rogers today for um, to share with us a little bit about spirituality, carpentry, and all that jazz. And he's going to be sharing with us some insights and reflections about this particular hobby that he's gotten into and how it has nurtured his spirituality. Uh, we are recording this evening because some people were unable to join us, so we're going to be posting it on YouTube. Uh, but we will just be featuring, of course, uh, Ruben as he uh, leads us in the reflection. So I'm just going to um, spotlight him. Okay, so I think uh, this has been a hobby that I put aside or uh, put in the back burner for a very, very long time. Uh, I always wanted to work with wood uh, for reasons I will tell you soon. Um, but COVID has really given me the opportunity to do so. And I'm very glad I could start. As you can see, this, uh, this top is a tabletop, which I, I started with, and it's my first project. Um, it's wood with epoxy. So wherever there was a gap and you see the black part, uh, that is epoxy. So the inspiration for this started with, uh, I don't know if you are, I don't know if too many of you, are, if many of you all know, but my, I think I've told this story to a few of y'all. My granddad, um, he was not a Catholic, but uh, was inspired by redemptive priests who passed by his town and uh, so he was one of the first Catholics in his town and he was pretty influential uh, in this little village of his. And uh, the good part about uh, being influential and he was pretty rich, I think, in those days. Uh, he was able to get a good education back in, this is back in India, so uh, during the British ruling. So he was able to get a good education and uh, he studied architecture and uh, he actually built uh, the first crucifix and the first altar that were, became part of the church in the small town later on, right? And uh, my my mom, when she got married uh, to my dad, uh, my grandma asked her, what do you want from the house? And she said, I want the crucifix. So that crucifix, crucifix is actually at my place back home in India. Uh, it's very close to us. Uh, it has a lot of meaning. And uh, I used to look at it every day and... Uh, it's, it's at the entrance uh, and the exit, uh, however you want to look at it. So uh, every day I just look at it and I say, one day I'm going to start this uh, carpentry and I'm going to do something with this. Yeah? So the day has finally come. So hope it's given me the opportunity to do this now. Um, apart from that, I think there's just something really, really nice uh, working with uh, wood. Uh, it brings you closer to creation in so many ways that uh, uh, you have to experience it. I cannot explain it. Right? Like even if you just go shopping for wood, right? Uh, you look at the different types of species, and you, you start to learn different things. Like, for example, the rings on the wood tell the age of the wood. Uh, you can tell how old the tree has been by the concentric rings if you count them. Uh, things like that, right? Um, and also you meet the most interesting people. Like when I started uh, this journey, uh, very strangely, I went to this place to buy some wood. Uh, up in North York, uh, forgot the name. Um, and I met this other elderly gentleman uh, who, uh, who told me that he also started working on wood uh, because of COVID and then uh, for some reason, he struck up a conversation about saying that he was inspired because uh, Joseph and Jesus in turn were carpenters. And he was like, I, you know, I'm a Catholic and I just wanted to do this because uh, I thought if if God can do it, I should follow in his footsteps kind of thing. You know? And it's really, really interesting. You find so many people who, uh, who carry out this hobby with a real passion and uh, yeah, I, I can see why it is. Once you get your hands on it, uh, uh, you really start. It really starts to inspire you. Like the skill uh, really draws you. It, it, it occupies a lot of your time. You're constantly thinking about how you can do things, and 
different ways of doing things. Um, also for me, um, I think it was great to just get away from my my mundane and routine uh, work. I sit, I'm a software engineer, so I, I sit in front of the screen for about 10 hours a day easily. Um, and if I'm not, if I was not doing woodworking and during COVID time, uh, it's definitely Amazon Prime or Netflix or something like that. So it's good to get out. Uh, and uh, I've been blessed to have a garage. It's, uh, it's, it's completely closed, so it's not very cold in the winter if you just bundle up a bit. Um, I can still work in the winter. And uh, a lot of the tools that I have um, were given to me uh, by either a friend who was like, hey, you're getting into this and I have some tools lying around. Or uh, my 2 b father-in-law also had a few tools which he never used ever. Um, she came in very useful for me. Um, apart from that, uh, there's just something nice about working with your hands, you know, like, you uh, just the touch and the feel of the wood. Uh, and then when it, it takes a lot of effort, but at the end, when you see the creation, uh, I remember I did this, the first coat of uh, the oil, uh, the first top coat of the oil uh, last week. And as soon as I put on the first coat and like it just popped the grain out uh, in this, I was so excited. I took so many pictures. I sent it to everyone who knew about it, and I was like, uh, "This is the first. Uh, this is the, this is how it's going to look like, you know." And uh, everybody was uh, very, very uh, supportive. And uh, yeah, so that's the story of how it begins. Uh, I'm just going to walk you all through now the tools that I used, and I think that are most useful for a beginner. I think a lot of you all had uh, these questions. Uh, and I was talking to you all uh, about the hobby that I started. So firstly, uh, safety is most important. Uh, safety is everything. Uh, I can tell you I have definitely missed a few accidents uh, because I use most of the safety gear. Um, firstly, get a good pair of gloves, okay? Uh, these are uh, like insulated leather gloves. Um, I remember when I was using the bit on the edge to get the edge, I did not tighten the bit hard tight enough and it flew out and it hit the, the glove and it could have taken off flesh and bone easily if I did not have it, right? So yeah, safety first, okay? Uh, always remember that. Uh, so yeah, the gloves are the first thing. Uh, the other thing that uh, you have to know is that most of the tools that you'll buy uh, just keep in mind, they all uh, cater to dust collection, okay? And I think uh, that's the second most important thing that I found uh, while woodworking. Uh, dust collection is most important. Uh, there's so much dust lying around, uh, whether you're sawing or you're routing or you're sanding or whatever. Uh, get a pair of uh, safety glasses. Uh, I think the first time I came in, like, like a hero and uh, my fiance cat, uh, after after I went back into the house, she was like, uh, I can actually see the wood chips in your eyes and she got me these pair of glasses, but yeah, uh, do get a pair of safety glasses, very important. Uh, a lot of the tools, like I said, can plug into a vacuum and they have ports that collect dust as, as you're doing the work. So, this talk back, uh, like I said, a lot of these were gifted or uh, they're just lying around. My two baby father in law bought this shop back and it's been lying here for about 10 years. Apparently, it was on sale on, in Costco. So he's like, oh, it's a great idea to buy it. And uh, he never used it ever. So it was very useful for me. Uh, I use it all the time. Uh, the other th is, so that, that's, uh, that's from safety and uh, like, you know, dust collection point of view. The other very important tools that you need is first you need a saw. Let me just grab a saw here. I have an uh, electric saw. Uh, also, yeah, I'm not sponsoring any of these companies, so this is just from my research and things that I could afford as a, a beginner woodworking uh, hobbyist. So uh, I started with uh, this. This had a few features that I really liked. 
uh, knowing myself and uh, knowing that I have hurt myself a lot of times doing a lot of things. Uh, I also ride motorcycles, so I've broken a lot of bones. Um, this particular saw has a stopper, so I can actually stop the saw if, if and it, 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 I don't have to rely on it to stop on its own. Uh, it's got a brake, so that's very useful. And that's the, the first thing that uh, uh, moved me towards buying, uh, making a choice towards buying this saw. Um, also, like I said, uh, all of these tools come with depth quotes. Uh, they're very ingeniously made. Uh, if you can, if you can see the saw, it has a hole here, and whenever you saw, the dust only comes out of this hole. So if you plug in a shop pack over here, it collects all the dust. It, it doesn't go anywhere else. I don't know how it's made, but it's it's brilliant, okay? It just works. That is one. Um, as soon as I used this the first time, I realized my cuts were not straight, okay? I can show you a few boards that, uh, I don't have them, I, I haven't used them, but uh, yeah, I can show you a few boards that I thought it was going straight, but I was like, huh, who needs a track? And you know, who needs anything that, that cuts a board straight? And uh, you soon realize uh, it's it's very much like when I shave my side locks, you know? I look in the mirror and I say, hey, I, I'll just take off a little bit on the side and then a little bit on the side. And then end of the day is like, if I take off anymore, I'm going too high, like, you know? And they're uneven. So um, I learned uh, early on that I you can either make a jig that allows you to saw straight. You can get like a board that is straight, put it beside the saw. And um, I tried that. It's a little difficult, but it's not impossible, right? Uh, you can do that. But I got something called a saw track, which is definitely uh, one of the most useful things. Uh, this is called saw track. Uh, Basically, it's just a track, as you can see. Uh, the saw sits on this plate, and then it goes up and down the track. Uh, the good thing about this particular track is it's got like uh, rubber pads at the bottom, so it doesn't move when, when you saw it. Uh, and it's very, very uh, accurate. This, this, the track is smooth, um, and it just slides up. Um, and it's got this little, uh, yeah, the, like the small details that you realize, there are a lot of companies that make a lot of things, but for example, this particular track has this, this small edge in the corner, yeah, this part. So if uh, you wanna start uh, outside of your table's edge, you can start from there and then it goes in. So this track, I mean, the saw sits on this part before it actually hits the track. So it's really useful. Um, there are a lot of uh, competitors and a lot of uh, products, but yeah, please do uh, your own research and see what's suitable. Uh, I think money is one of the most uh, defining factors in what you choose to buy. Uh, also, with that being said, um, I realized later after I bought a few of my tools that uh, there is there is a lot of stuff that you can get uh, like secondhand off Kijiji and like Facebook marketplace. I wish I had known earlier. Um, for example, uh, after I bought this saw, there was a, a lady who wanted a saw for one time use and she used it. It was the same saw and she sold it for like half the price. And I was like, oh no, like, you know, I just missed my opportunity. But yeah, so um, things I learned from uh, experience Please look at, and especially because it's a, it's a hobby, right? You're not you're not doing it as a serious business, so um, you can you can make a few mistakes, especially when you buy it off like uh, these places, uh, marketplace or Kijiji and things like that. They're really not very expensive. Um, you could get like a saw that someone's disposing of for like forty dollars or something. Okay, so the this is definitely the most one of the most useful tools uh, saw. Um, apart from the saw, uh, I would say the second very useful tool would be uh, a drill driver, uh, basically to, to screw in like uh, nails or to make holes in your wood. Um, very, very useful. Um, 
this this is my choice because it was the cheapest one in the market i don't have, i really cannot tell you that i chose this because it has any features and thing like but very very useful to have uh, i also use this uh, for other purposes you you have an attachment uh, like a wire wheel basically this is a steel uh, mesh kind of thing on a wheel and uh, i use it to keep off the sides of the wood uh, the bark um and get down to like the hardwood uh instead of using like a chisel because i i started with the chisel it takes forever so a power tool like this like makes your life very very easy uh you just attach the wire wheel to uh to the drill and uh you just use it uh on the edge of it to chip off the sides yeah. um yeah also i spent ages uh and a lot of time researching on youtube looking at some kind of videos and getting a lot of ideas the other things are uh, very basic stuff but very very useful to have is definitely tape measure uh uh it it is it's always very handy like you know i before i had the track and uh, i used to do things just by eyeballing it uh it, it's not a good idea so it's always good to measure and do your stuff if not you're going to have a crooked table or not a table or something like that um chisel you can get uh, a good chisel set for for like 20 30 dollars off amazon um this is very very useful when you want to like chip off like small parts of the wood which your bigger tools cannot uh, reach so always buy uh, a chisel set for starters is very very useful um there are things that you can do with this that no tools can do uh, Uh, yeah. Apart from that, the most time that you will spend uh, is measuring and cutting. Right. In order to do that, you need like clamps. Uh, so these are some clamps that are like these are some smaller clamps. And you just like lock it in, lock the table in, screw it in, and it holds the table in place. Uh, if you want to like saw or uh, if you're drilling or something like that. Uh, one of the rookie mistakes i made was not clamping in and i just still remember uh this table is actually the tabletop is sitting on another tabletop and you all can't see it uh, in the camera but uh, i slipped off this table because the table slided off because i had not clamped it and i cut the below table and ruined it so so yes so thank god this is not a very used table it's just like my workshop table so it's fine but yeah so always remember to clamp down don't be hasty uh in doing things especially when you're using your power tools um i think mistakes are that maybe realize that that could have been my hand or my leg or something like that so um yeah just just be very cautious when you're using stuff uh always get the right equipment and uh, always make sure everything is clamped down like really hard okay uh I remember also um I don't know why I thought I was really good at uh uh just with my eyes and my hands so I never bought tools that actually helped me be more accurate um one of the mistakes I made really early on was uh I was trying to attach two boards and uh, I was trying to drill holes on the side and kind of center it and uh I used the scale and I did it. Uh, I measured it and I tried center and I I drilled the holes. But then you realize after I finished all the holes that they were all lopsided, right? So when I attached two sheets together, uh, one was higher and one was lower. So this kind of a jig is a really useful jig. Um, I can show you how it works. Yes, yes, one. Basically, uh, it helps you drill holes. uh you put it on the wood and if you just turn it it's always the center you always drill a hole in the center right so you just have to hold it in place and put the drill through this right uh i don't know why i hesitated on buying this this is like 10 dollars on amazon but <laughs> it is the most useful thing you should you should like there are small useful things that uh as you saw 
getting into the hobby, hobby you'll find really useful. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, right. The, the other thing that you cannot do, I mean, you could do it with a saw, but it's very difficult, is uh, once you've finished uh, most of your furniture, you'll need to like round off the edges because the saw really uh, uh, leaves a rough edge at the, at the side of it. So um, what you would normally need for something like that is a router, right? So your router, uh, I got this uh, from Home Depot because that rather was Home Depot and I had a discount. Uh, this is a rigid router. Uh, it also comes with a dust collection port. So as soon as it starts uh, cutting off the wood from the side of the table, it collects it out into the dust port over here. Very useful. Um, it, I don't think you all can see it, but let me see if I can move the camera a bit. And if you see, yeah, so this edge has been routed. This edge has been routed. If you can see the, the kind of a dinge here, and that's where you use your, your router for. Uh, Uh, the other thing that you can use the router for is, uh, let's say you want to join two pieces of uh, of wood, and uh, you need to make like uh, like divots or holes in in the edge, so that you could attach like two pieces like this. So you would need to route out uh, slots on both ends. So you. Is someone having a problem with the audio? I can hear. I don't know if anybody else is having trouble. I can hear. Okay. Yeah, I can hear. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, so the router is also useful uh, when you want to like make uh, small holes. Uh, on the side of the wood, and uh, and you can just you can just push them in together, kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, the next thing you'll need when you buy the router is uh, is auto bits, um, thing like this. These are bits uh, that you can you can create different edges on the side of your table. Uh, very useful. Um, you can get them. Uh, you can get them in most kinds of shows, uh, very easily available. Uh, so, uh, the next thing that I bought and I thought uh, was not a very good purchase for a beginner is this. This is a planer. Basically, uh, if you have uneven uh, surface on your wood and you want to flatten it out, uh, I'm sure you. Like, like I think uh, most woodworkers would have the hand planer, you know, it's just a blade which is put at an angle and they push it across and it takes off like strips of wood and they keep doing it. Uh, me just being me was very lazy and I thought this would have been a great investment. But uh, the first time I used this, uh, I made such a big uh, dinge in the wood. I, there's no way you can put back it, put back the wood once you, once you mess it up, you know. So be very careful. Uh, I think this, as much as it is a useful tool, I don't think it is something that you should use as a beginner. This has really good accuracy, but still, uh, it has to be used by someone who is uh, a little more experienced. So uh, as a first time woodworker, I would suggest just buy a hand planer. It costs like $5 in Home Depot, and it's uh, definitely going to be more useful than this. Okay. So last, the last tool I will show you all is uh, this uh, sander. The most time spent in finishing is with this tool. Uh, I think I finished the table in about a week or so, uh, just doing it on and off. And I spent about two weeks sanding it down, okay? Uh, also because I don't have too much time to do this and I do it uh, after work. so. It's a little difficult, but um, 
if I have to advise anyone, uh, if you are think you're like doing large surfaces, definitely get a bigger sander than this because this base, the, the base of the sander is so small. You have to go over like this table is about uh, 72 into 35 inches. It really took me about, uh, I should say every day I used to come, come down here and sand this for about uh, two hours and it took me two weeks. So yeah, it takes a lot of time to sand, okay? And I'm still not done. You all can't see it on the camera because it's not very clear, but uh, I have taken it and you get different grits of sandpaper. So you get like uh, different grits of sandpaper. This is a 60 grit and this is a 360 grit. So you start with the roughest one and you go down um, to smoothen it out. Um, I have only reached uh, the 120 grit yet. So I still have to go up two more grits on this. Uh, you can see a lot of swirl marks. You all can't see it on the camera, but I can see it up here. Um, apart from that, um, I don't know if I have it here, but you get something called a stuck tape. Stuck tape is like a, a red tape uh, that you can use to temporarily keep uh, uh, like, for example, I used epoxy and I wanted to make a seal from the base. So I used duct tape on the entire base. I sealed it off with duct tape and then I poured the epoxy into it. Um, the good thing about duct tape is the epoxy doesn't stick to it. So you can just pull it out after you're done kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then um, finishes. You can, you can buy a bunch of finishes. There are a ton of finishes out there. Um, I, it depends, like if you want to change the color of the wood, then you get a finish. Uh, like you can buy pine and make it look like a uh, walnut, for example, right? So you buy pine wood and then you just buy a finish or a stain that has walnut written on it and it'll look like walnut, but it's not, it's pine, okay? So pine is much cheaper than walnut, so you can do something like that if you really want it to make the look, uh, wood look different, right? But uh, to someone who has learned something about uh, the variety of woods, they would recognize easily because the, the, the grain in the wood is very different from walnut as compared to pine. But yeah, you'll find a lot of people do stuff like this. Uh, you make cheaper wood look like more expensive wood, basically, uh, with the finish. So yeah, this is great to have. Uh, and then if you want something more uh, organic, you could go for like, this is a chemical finish. Uh, it's not bad, it's more widely used. If you want something more organic, you can go for like an oil finish. Uh, this is a natural oil finish that I used on this table top. So for the tops, I uh, especially if it's, it's gonna be a dining table or something you're gonna eat food off, uh, I, would, I mean, it's always suggested to have like a good uh, food grade kind of a finish so that you're not like poisoning yourself uh, slowly. So. This is a good oil-based finish that uh, you can get anywhere. Um, and uh, yes, and wood, uh, shopping for wood in Toronto, um, I think that's all about the tools. Um, shopping for wood in Toronto is, is a difficult experience, uh, especially for the fact that I wanted like live edge slabs. It's really very difficult. Like if you go to Home Depot, you'll just get like straight slabs like these. Uh, they'll cut it to your dimension, your width, uh, whatever you want, and they'll give it to you. But you will, it's very difficult to get live edge lumber in Toronto. There are a few places that I found. Um, one is called Exotic Woods. It's all the way out in Nisoga, I think. And uh, there was this place that I found uh, called Angel Wood. Uh, it's in North York um, that I bought these labs from. Um, you will spend a lot of time looking at different types of cuts and uh, what suits your, like, you know, your uh, project that you're doing. Uh, I would say if you have the time and you can travel up north, I do know that a lot, there are a lot of like lumber mills, uh, like Northern Ontario, uh, about an hour or two from Toronto, that you could get a lot more, uh, both for species at least for, for a much cheaper rate. So yeah, that's that. And uh, last but not least, another thing that is very, very useful to guard you from the dust is you can get like a, not like a, it's just basically a wind sheeter, but 
it doesn't uh, the dust doesn't stick to your body you have a hood on it uh, i'm planning to get like the entire work pant uh, suit kind of a thing so it, it's much more useful but this is pretty useful like you know most of the dust comes uh, waist level so it, it doesn't hit your body it's pretty good cool. um, yeah and uh, you know i can also get something like this this is very useful this is actually a foam top back uh, connection dust port collector but it's really useful it expands like uh, i think it's uh, I don't know how, how long, but it really expands a lot. So I could have my uh, vacuum in one end, and I could plug this into any of my like tools, and uh, it will just collect the dust on the vacuum, and uh, you have a lot less dust uh, in inside your workspace. Kind of thing. Uh, yes, also very useful tool. Always have a hammer. Never know when it comes in handy. Uh, Two types of hammers. Get one with like this one with with a rubber edge, so you don't like dent or uh, hurt the wood. If you want to like uh, put in two uh, edges together, or you want to like put things together, yes. And the other one is like what Santos got over there, a metal one. If you're like driving in a nail into the wood, uh, yeah. Um, if you're using the metal one on the wood and you miss, you're gonna dent it and there's no way, like, I mean, unless you fill it with the epoxy, there's, there's no way you can undent it, right? It's, it's really difficult. So, yeah, always get like a rubber hammer and a metal hammer. Very, very useful. With that, I think I'm done. There's nothing else that I can show you. Um, any questions, anybody? Yes, thanks, Ruben. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, just uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. We're still recording at this point, and we're going to continue recording for the next little bit, but feel free to um, ask any questions of Ruben. Um, I just have a question about the first part of your um, story. Maybe my audio wasn't that good. With the crucifix over the like door. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so my my granddad uh, was uh, my granddad. He uh, I, I I don't know if you heard the full story, but he was a convert to Catholicism. So um, he. When he became a Catholic, the first few things he made was a crucifix. And uh, when he when they decided to build a church, he built uh, the altar and all the wooden um, stuff that they needed for the church. Um, in fact, actually, our living room uh, was one of the first churches in that town. So he converted our living room actually into a church and we used to have mass at home. Uh, and he made a crucifix out of wood. And that uh, is at my place uh, back home in India. And I see it, it my mom uh, hang, hang, hang it in front of the door, uh, just inside the house. So every time I leave, uh, I have the habit of touching it and leaving. And every time I come back, I touch it and come back in, right? So every time I look at it, and, uh, I was always inspired to, to do something out of wood. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the close fix, yeah. What's your next project once you're done with the table? Uh, I have quite a few actually. So I want to make a TV console um, and I want to make a, like a smart desk for myself. When I say smart desk, uh, I have lofty ideas, but let's see. Uh, so the smart desk is going to have uh, plugs uh, straight on the desk, firstly for all your power outlets and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to have like a wire collector system at the bottom. And uh, I have the new iPhone, so it has wireless charger. So I'm going to put the wireless charger inlaid in the wood. So I just put my iPhone on top and it will charge, basically. So that's, that's the next few projects. 
Are you going to make something for CAT? Uh, CAT has bigger projects which uh, require uh, much, much more of my time. She wants, she wants, uh, CAT's got a lot of clothes. I should just warn you, okay? So he's got a lot of clothes. And I'll, she has so many clothes, she cannot put them in the closet right now. So she's got boxes, okay? Uh, they're just sitting in the boxes and she sometimes she doesn't even know what's in this boxes, right? You know? um, so uh, she wants like this closet space. She actually drew it out for me. So that's definitely also another project that's going to happen. Apart from that, I think uh, I do offer, like anybody who wants to use any of my tools or user space, yeah, feel free to come in. Like one thing I found was very difficult over here is that, like, like simple things like, uh, um, like if you wanted to, you could like, you could get this sanded outside also, which saves you like two weeks of sanding. <laughs> uh, but strangely, it's very difficult to find someone to do it for you. Uh, they would do it like part of their own woodworking business, but they don't outsource the service. Um, so yeah, if anybody needs any tools or any help and ideas on how to do things, uh, yeah, we do. You're always welcome to ask me. Um, Ruben, I missed the introduction. I'm really sorry I was late. Um, I just, maybe you covered it when you started, but like, um, just was curious, like, um, you know, I know it's kind of a big question, but like how, um, the, like this whole, you know, uh, new hobby has really deepened your, your relationship with, with God and like how this has maybe facilitated you to more like pray more, deepen your connection. Yeah, I think, uh, like I covered it in the beginning, but I'll just skim through it now. Uh, one of the big things about my granddad's conversion is actually setting up the church, right? And it's always been very inspiring. Like uh, he was not born uh, Catholic, obviously, right? So um, it was always close to me uh, that I wanted to do something related to woodworking because it was such a passion of his also. If, you, if I have pictures, of, I don't have it right now, but I have pictures of things he's done for the church, right? And uh, it's really inspiring. And um, it, it brings you closer to God because you're just working with nature. You know? You're just looking at it and uh, you, you touch, you feel, you smell the word. Uh, it really, really is, uh, brings you closer and makes you appreciate much more like just nature and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of times uh, I use these uh, noise cancelling. Oh yes, another thing is very useful that you know, should get is that power tools are really noisy. I mean, even this small thing here makes a ton of noise. Like you know, uh, the other day, cat was telling me, sounded like uh, I don't know, there was a generator running in the background or something like. That. So use uh, some kind of headphones or earplugs or something like. That. Uh, I'm constantly uh, listening to like gospel music uh, of Amazon Prime, uh, Prime Music. Uh, they have like a gospel station. They just throw something on and it. I just, like, you know, you're still praying in the process of whatever you're doing. So, yeah, um, it does increase my time spent with God in that way. Uh, I do almost like an hour every day of this, and I'm like constantly just listening to worship music. So, and that's the only thing I play on the scripture. I hope that answers the question. Um, just another question about, uh, like the table you made, yeah. uh, like it's probably also important for you and your family and like, you know, what you want to have in the future, uh, yeah. like how important is that for you? Like the value of the table where you sit together and everything. Yes, like true. That. So this table, uh, is actually not for Kat and me. This table is going to her parents. Uh, this is a very late Christmas gift that is still in the making, as you can see, but uh, it's, it's, it's happening. And uh, they don't, they have an idea that it's coming, but they don't, they haven't seen it yet. So it's going to be uh, really surprising for them and uh, 
we spend most of our family dinners at their place rather than uh, at here in this house. So every Sunday we we finish mass and we have lunch at their place. So uh, it, it really is going to be very meaningful. Enough. How many people are in the family? So, Kat and her younger brother and her mom and dad. Uh, her dad has a younger sister and her mom has uh, two uh, siblings who have uh, two kids each. So, pre-COVID, uh, we used to have a lot of fun. We, we they, they tend to gather at least once a month. Um, so, yeah, it's... And there's a barbecue set over here, which we got uh, last year. And yeah, it's, it's really, it's really fun. Well, what, what's the dimensions of the table? Because it actually looks quite large from this, this vantage actually, point. And I'm just imagining how many people would be sitting around the table. This is actually um, not very big. Size. This is actually not very big. It looks big, but uh, it can fit eight people comfortably. And if you want to stuff people, then you can stuff 12 people uncomfortably. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the dimensions of it. Okay. Because I it for for me from where I'm watching, yeah. um, it almost looks like you could put two people at the end and then uh, people down the side. You could put two people what at it, the end. You could. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And, you measured uh, the dining room, I hope. I did. I did measure the dining room before. Uh, I, said, yeah. <laughs> um, I measured the dining room. I should, I should be truthful about this. I measured the dining room, but I couldn't get myself to cut the ends off the wood, you know? So I told my future mother-in-law to move the couch a little more in the living room so that it becomes a bigger dining room space. <laughs> and she was like, okay, fine, it's fine. <laughs> we'll do that. You know, I think when we're listening to you, Ruben, it's it's kind of um, perhaps sparking in us. You know, we may not feel we're actually the the woodworking types, but perhaps it may be chiming in us um, an experience or uh, a hobby that we ourselves maybe have done before that has helped us in that connection or. Um, can see a hobby that we might look at differently, something that we've tried or attempted. And I'm just wondering for everybody that's here present, um, you know, just taking a moment to think about that for yourself. What hobby or what practice that you have that you can look at differently or allow it to inspire you in your relationship with Christ, in your relationship with God, uh, whether it's something as literal as carpentry because of that inspiration, or maybe it is an action um, or a hobby that you have an interest in that you can use it as a meditation piece or as a way of um, going deeper with God. So could we perhaps not to change uh, the direction with questions, but maybe uh, just think about it for a moment and, and, and say what your hobby might be. You don't have to justify it. You don't have to explain it. But what hobby might you uh, take on in these wonderful COVID times that can speak to your spirituality? Just take a moment and think about that. Since I asked the question, I'll start off. I, I would I would use cooking because I think um, for me it would be cooking, and that's something that has been important for me. Whether it's in my ministry and my that's the way that I always connect through that hospitality, that creativity. So for me, it's cooking. I was going to say that too, Sanjay. Like the second thing I really enjoy doing is cooking. Like I really enjoy cooking.
for me personally, it's also like cooking and baking. But um, what the first thing that came to my mind when we, we like talk about You're choppy. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I will make it short. Uh, like the first things I thought about was um, like one of my last experience with my grandfather had while after we built uh, a dog house together for our dog. So that was a very nice experience like because we still could do something with him. Like we spent a weekend with him building the dog house but he passed away like two weeks after that or three weeks after that. But the dog was of course still there and every day I see the dog house on the deck. So it was always like, yeah, yeah, I, I built that with my grandfather. And so, yeah, that's probably also something I want to go back to uh, when I'm a little bit older. Uh, for me, I can say that it'd be anything that is outdoors. So walking or riding my bike or um, jogging. One, just because I try to appreciate nature and I always see God's creation. Like I always admire everything that I see in nature. I love seeing the birds and the ducks and how beautiful their colors are. And so I think that would be one thing. And I know yoga, but I want to do Catholic yoga. I want to start my own Catholic yoga thing. Because I know we're not supposed to do yoga, but I, every time I do my yoga, I do like my, like I don't do it, whatever they do. I just do my stretch exercises, but I always try to do some kind of, my meditation will be towards God. Like I'll be trying to be doing prayers or stuff like that, where I'm just thanking God for a new day and not so much of whatever the other stuff yoga people do. So there goes my sin of the week. Sorry. <laughs> is that, can I do that, Father? Can I do yoga and then just have like God in my mind and do my prayers? Or is that totally against what we should do? Because I know it helps with my achy muscles. It's fine, Monica. Yeah. I'm forgiven. Thank you. Um, similar to Monica, I was just the only thing I could uh, think of was um, hiking and just getting outdoors like I'm in the middle of trying to plan another hiking or a camping trip later this summer. And just uh, looking forward to seeing the stars and just sort of being in that like there's something just about when you drive, you know, like five, four or five hours up north and it's just like quiet and just a black night sky like that dark sky. It's it's definitely um, yeah, definitely um, really special. And um, yeah, definitely feel that connection. Ask those questions, those philosophical questions about why am I here? <laughs> but yeah, no, it definitely creates a lot of um, a space to think and reflect, yeah. I forgot to mention one thing, if I may, um, not just that, um, like what I was in nature, but I see what my body's capable of doing and how we're such wonderful individuals. And like when I go bike riding and I started doing like 40 kilometers and I did 70 kilometers and just seeing how you, your body gets better, the more you do it, like when you start running or when you start doing all these exercises, you just see how amazing we are as a human being, right? And all the things that we're capable of doing. And, and I also appreciate that I'm able to do it, that I have two legs, two arms, like that I can see, that I can hear, that I'm able to do it. So not just seeing the creation, but also appreciating everything that, that God has given me. It's also a way. There's a lot of people who mentioned uh, riding a bike. So yes, that for, for, for those of you who know, like Catalina is already shaking her head. I want to ride a motorcycle, and then I'm going to buy one soon. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about it. I think woodworking, uh, it's a good passion, but I cannot even compare it to 
how passionate I, I feel about riding motorcycle. And I think that is the one of the closest moments I will be to God. You know, I, I don't know. And Kat keeps saying, I'm, I'm glad because you should be constantly praying because you're in so much danger. But <laughs> that's not why I, I feel it, you know. I, it's just a sense of freedom that I cannot experience doing anything else. And that freedom of self just brings me closer to God, if that makes sense. Well, you can make your own crutches. <laughs> and you're closest to God because you're about to die on that thing. So <laughs> be. Any other, anyone else like to share a, a hobby or a something that they could, that they've done or that they could do to draw them closer in their spirituality. Yeah, so I can go next. So can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Matthew. Yeah, so pretty much like uh, when I was young, I used to play the piano a lot and I went up to like grade six piano and then I quit. Um, so during these times, especially when we can't like socialize, I've started my own like YouTube channel. It's called like DJ COVID. And like, I just play different um, music and like it inspires like creativity in me. And like, I can play a variety of different songs. So it's kind of limitless. So it's really inspirational for me. I've seen it on your Facebook, Matt. I was going to say the same thing, Matthew. I've uh, listened, watched a couple of YouTube videos. They're great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty impressive. Thanks. What's the name of your channel, Matthew? Because I haven't seen it. Uh, I can check it out. DJ COVID. DJ COVID. That's how you said it. Sorry. Okay, Ruben, anything else you'd like to share with us or I think, uh, in our conversation? I think uh, COVID has really given us an opportunity because you spend so much time at home right now. Uh, yeah, like my two hours of commute to and fro office has been cut and you have like so much more time on your hands. Um, it, it is difficult like to start uh, a new hobby. Sometimes it's, you, you start something you might not like it, but I think uh, you will never know until you start, right? So I would like suggest that everybody just pick up what they really wanted to do uh, uh, and never had the time to do it and just go for it. Like, you know, really just go for it. Uh, you never know. Um, how much you like something and uh, yeah, you'll never know until you try, basically. Okay, well, thank you, Ruben. Thank you so much, you know, for your insights, your, your uh, thoughts, your, your inspiration, you know. Uh, Joanne put in the chat there, passionate and also actually good at it. Very mm -hmm. impressive how he, how much he has learned on his own, which, you know, you've put a lot of thought and you've put a lot of um, openness to how complicated, and well, at the same time, how easy what you're doing is, mm -hmm. but in order to make it easy, you had to study a little bit. So you put, yeah. you invested the time and the energy to make the hobby worthwhile for you. Um, because, you know, as you were speaking, you were explaining about all the tools and endorsing, you know, Home Depot and all these other <laughs> companies. And uh, I'm not sure how you're gonna get any kickbacks from this, but, um, <laughs> 
about how how uh, how much you have to understand what's the best route to go what sometimes yeah. what's the easier way to go uh for certain things and you know a lot of it is discernment you know how do you make this a worthwhile venture for yourself so you know a lot of what you said tonight really i think really shares that uh for us so much appreciated um your input and also just that reminder that inspiration that we can you know things don't have to be complicated in order to draw us closer to god um just like with prayer prayer is um prayer when simple uh, i think touches our heart more complicated more than something that is complicated um or over complicating things so thank you for sharing that just simple gesture that simple nature so we're going to conclude with a, a carpenter's prayer. Um, I wonder if I can share that here. No, I don't think I can share the image with you here. So let's just take a moment and, and just call to mind God's goodness uh, for us, God's graciousness in um, understanding how we're called to create to work with our hands, to know that our efforts and our generosity that we learn from the Lord is about generosity and creativity for others. You know, Reuben has shared, is making things for himself, but also for others. And it's, I think it's important that the impetus to actually move forward with this is for the generosity of family the care and love uh, that he has for his new family and for the graciousness um, of sharing that gift for them. So let's just take a moment asking the Lord to continue to touch us uh, through this inspiration and also to inspire us uh, with how our hands are called to work for one another and for God. So we pray. O oh Lord, I ask you to grant me the vision to see the hidden art that you placed in each stick of wood. The steadiness in my hands to guide the tools straight and true. The wisdom to lay out the lines right the first time. The intelligence to Keep my fingers out of the saw blades. The touch to sand each curve and corner just right. And the gentleness to make each stroke of my brush smooth and just. And most of all, let everyone feel the love that I put into every project I make. Lord, I ask this so I may follow in your footsteps every day, both in the work and in life, for you are the world's best carpenter. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So once again, Reuben, we thank you for this uh, this opportunity to come together. It's a little bit of a, I know you wanted to, to share with others about what you're doing and you know how it has inspired you. So we appreciate that you are sharing the gift of yourself through the gift of what you're doing. So, so thank you for that.